Welcome back to From My Living Room to Yours. I have a couple of different things I want to share today, and even though they're different, I believe they're related. Today, or I should say this weekend, marked the 10-month anniversary of our first stay-at-home orders in California. And although it doesn't look like it when I run in to pick up some groceries or go for a walk on the beach, we are currently still under restrictions that limit our ability to socialize, travel, go see a movie, etc. And many of our hospitals are maxed out in terms of ICU beds and other areas. One parishioner who had to drop off his wife for surgery last week told me how sobering it was to drive into the hospital parking lot and see a temporary structure which had been um, put in place to house some of the overflow. And how a year ago we would never have ever considered that that would have been possible, have been required, so strange that there's now temporary structures outside our hospitals to serve those who are sick because our systems are overtaxed. The epidemiologist who spoke at our clergy session a few weeks back shared another sobering comment. The spread of COVID, she said, is no longer just a set of numbers. Rather, for all of us, it represents names. Almost every one of us knows someone who has died of COVID, who has been in the hospital with COVID, or was very sick with COVID. Those numbers are now names. And we know that thousands and thousands of other people in this country alone are suffering due to unemployment. I paint that picture because it's our reality. I describe all of that because it's what so many of you say to me as a preface to your own personal struggles. More than ever, people have been saying to me, I hate to even mention this because it seems so insignificant in comparison to all of those people who have it so much worse off than I do. And I want you to know what I say to those people, what I say to all of you. It is not a contest. It's true you might not be suffering in the same way that others are, but it's not a contest. Just because your problems don't seem as catastrophic as someone else's doesn't mean they aren't challenging problems for you. Now, if you let your own challenges overwhelm you in a way that you lose sight that other people are also suffering, maybe that's an issue, and we can talk about that. But here's the deal. We are living through a very traumatic time in history. Even if you're not directly experiencing trauma in your life, we're all absorbing the trauma going on around us. We are all grieving for the world, for the violence in our nation, for our neighbors and friends and families who are struggling with COVID. This is a traumatic time and it's not a contest. The other thing I remind people is that God designed us with the wonderful ability to feel many emotions all at once. So while we hold that grief and trauma and feel the sadness and the fear and the anger around of it, we're still also able to feel joy and hope all at the same time, often in the same moment. So the other day at our Zoom coffee hour, as I asked for prayers for churches who are remaining vigilant this week of the inauguration because many are under threat by conspiracy groups, that some churches are too liberal and so these groups are threatening to attack them. A parishioner commented, this is a dark time. 
And I said, yeah, it is. It's a time of great darkness, but, but it's also a time of great hope. We are not alone in this. I think we are banding together in ways we haven't in a long, long time. We are standing up and saying, enough. This will not happen here. We are not alone. We are in this together. Yes, it's a dark time, but it is a time of great hope, and it's not a contest. So until next time, friends, be humble. Be grateful, be kind.